The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Terramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Terramina, blogger of the Sammy State Sports Blog, blog of Inside the OAA, and one of the hosts between Terramina and Ornate Television. I, I'm here on the local voice and SoundCloud. We are on. Um, we got Ian Locke back this week. Yeah, hey. I'm back. It's been it's been a rough week for my sports teams. Michigan State got beat. The Dallas Stars got beat. You know what I mean? It's oh, they really did? Tough. Yeah, for me. Hey, the Wings. No Two comment. wins. No comment. They got a crazy goal scorer. Mantha. Yeah, I try not to. Four that. goals in two games, or one game. Please don't rub Could it. Could it be the year? No. <laughs> the season's it. early, Sam. I know. I know. <laughs> um... We got a lot to talk about in the high school ranks. Um, yeah, man. Nick McKay wrote an interesting article. I like to get in, get in some touch on that. Um, base, but I've also did some investigative snooping myself into that. Yeah, on, um, on transfers, right? The transfers, correct. right? So here it comes, rears its ugly head again. We talked about it a year ago or a year and a half ago, and here we are again. Again. Um, also, we got recast from week six. Um, yeah, a couple crazy games that. Loomed, and if we have time, we could get into cross country. Of course, you were at the Oakland County. I was at the Oakland County meet. Oakland County we can give you some, yep. some results. Sure. Um, let's go to our main story, which was the article Nick McCabe wrote on um, investigating Stephanie Ante's um, defensive back, Robert Army. Of course, Army was a transfer from Detroit Renaissance. Um, basically, the article is very interesting because I guess. He followed Army down to Detroit originally because that's where his mom lives. Okay. But I did get some inside information from a couple accurate sources that he was living with his dad and living with his and um and was visiting his mom in Detroit because their family is divorced. So, okay. Which so can complicate it complicates things. not only your life, right? But it can complicate the sports uh, it does. issue. It does, and of course, the um, new rule states that. When you transfer in, it has to be a full and complete complete move, and that's where. <laughs> and and, you, and this goes back to this goes the back rules in the past. Go, what does that mean? What does that mean? Right? Are there clear? Are they really clear on clear on the rules and and so everybody knows what people, they and, need and to do? It goes back to the debate of if you're a transfer, do you do, do you include possibly all transfers having to sit out here? I mean, that's always been the question. Um, now, Mark Yol, the um, MHA new executive director, said that the um, the new rule has impacted transfers. Um, they've impacted, um, went down from 18% to 14%. But yes. there's still people that are going there, you know, for athletic reasons. You know, they're just, you know, there's still people going there. Yeah. So... And I mean, the same things are going on. And if I read the same article too, mm -hmm. and one of the points that was brought up by the coaches, right? Because mm -hmm. ultimately it lands on their heads. Right. People go after them, but eh. right. And the coaches that are playing above board for years and right. years, they know the rules and they're trying to toe the line, make sure everything's cool and make sure everything's, you know, but some of the coaches were mentioning saying, you don't get a bonus. No. For winning a state title. No. You're not getting, you know, a big endorsement deal because your high school team won. Except them. But there's coaches out there that are so competitive that must win, 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 that they'll do anything to get that player in there. And they know the MHSAA can't do anything about it. Right, because they, they said it themselves. They're not an enforcing agent. They're not, yeah. And I think personally... The MHA needs like a watchdog investigating group. They need a personal watchdog investigating group. And I think that. Or just have a universal thing. You said it, I don't know, just off the air. We're chatting about it. What's the solution? Just mandatory one mandatory year. Mandatory one year. Done. Yeah. Doesn't matter. That's all. I don't care who you are. That's all. That's all. You know what I mean? That's basically, that should be. You know, it should be the rule. Um, But it's so complicated. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It yeah. is very complicated. So it's a very messy situation. Yeah, it's. It, when you have people that are going to do scrupulous things, you know, like be, just be, we're, yeah. we're going to push the boundaries just because we can, and we know nobody can. It ruins it for others, right? It, it just, does. And it ripples. We go, what, what do you think the two, is it basketball and football basketball are the two football sports? Are two main sports. That are causing all of this trouble. Mm -hmm. It is. Right? It is. 
and, and when that he, could affect a swimmer. It could affect other people. You yes. know, other other sports. It's just now the new transfer rule does state that if you transfer in to a new school, you can play. You can play like a different sport besides the original sport you're supposed to play. Yes, because so, uh, somebody was doing track as opposed to, you know, football. Or correct. Yeah. Or like cross country, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Cross country. Yeah, makes sense. But um, but just you know, just in this case, it's, it's hard to describe because you know that we're we've been this has been we've been talking about this for nearly two years. <laughs> I know and. It feels feels like nothing's been done. It feels like nothing's been done, even though significant changes have yeah. been made. And we knew that. I mean, this is how many months into the new rule? Probably about. I mean, June. Three, yeah, June. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this July. school year, right? Yes. So let's say August. Yes. So you know, we knew we were going to run into Some hiccups. Hiccups. Yeah. Like what's going to happen? Uh, you know, we're not sure with any rules change. But when you don't have an organization behind their own rule to say, I know they're going to make modifications, but they move at such a glacial pace. It's so slow. <laughs> and this stuff is still going on. Yes. It's still going on. And, you know, you have people, you have, like, some people using false addresses to make yeah. sure the move is full and That's and been going on for a long time. And I think if the MHA wants to make a statement out of somebody, I mean, they just ruled Detroit Edison quarterback Martin Martinell, who was, who was beat out of Detroit Martin Luther King by a freshman quarterback named Dante Reed. Yes. Um, they ruled him ineligible. Really? Um, Th at this point of the at season? At Detroit Edison, yes. So there may be a possibility Detroit Edison might have to forfeit games. <laughs> and they were coming in at three. They were coming in at four and two. They might have to forfeit three games. So why does it take so long to get this stuff dealt with? And this you know, is, it and comes down to my point. I think they need to, the MHA needs to have people do an investigative policing enforcement. You know what I mean? Basically making sure that the move is complete, making sure that yeah. is. Because um, isn't, isn't all of this policing left up to the ADs and the schools, school districts themselves? Yes, but sometimes the schools don't know what's going on. Well, that's true. They don't know but, what's going on. But, I mean, on. that's the point. It's like if you have a governing body telling you rules, oh, yeah, but, you know, it's up to you to figure it out. Mm -hmm. I don't see how that's This is why I'm saying, you know, that's you know, a sustainable. You need, I'm saying, you know what I mean? If I'm the MHA, I hire maybe at least May five, six people, maybe and two And you know um, what they're going to say? We don't have the, fine, the resources. Yeah, we don't have the money. Say. That's what they're going to say. But you know what? If I'm them, you want to enforce your own rules. You want yeah. to enforce. You want to enforce them. You got to do this. You got two choices. One, make transfers sit out of here, or hire a hire a compliance officer. Basically, because I know all school districts have compliance officers. Yeah, and say you know if you're a new student, a transfer kid coming in there. Make sure the move is complete. Didn't they say, too, in the article, they had a, a reference saying, you know, it could be a five-minute online application process. Yeah. You know, if, if you can do certain things, uh, set it up through the state, if you have a driver's license, if you have, you, you know, your parents have to sign in and the student signs in and you register your address and, this, and the school district confirms that, yes, you're here, yes, they can, because the school district has to confirm your address as well. Correct. And so if your school district, I mean, if you're enrolling, you have to do that when you enroll. Yeah. And shouldn't there be like a checkbox? Are you participating in sports? Yes. Check. Which one? Check. Right? Yeah. I, and I, then you go, yeah, okay, I, what's your address? We can confirm it. Boom. You transmit it off to the MHSAA. Right. You get it off to the AD. Everything's clean. You know what? Exactly what you just said. Right? But I mean, there's going to be some people that are going to falsify but, but their things. That's true. But that's been going on since beginning of time when i was over at the waterford schools we had that all the time i know you know pontiac and waterford mott being so close together that you know parents were doing that all the time but they were they were catching them and they were looking for it because it's about funding and you know districts are not i don't want to say they're not in competition with one another besides sports but they want to make sure that 
your neighboring district gets the funds they're supposed to, right? So this is bigger than sports. This is, this is actually than, getting funds to yeah. operate your schools. Yeah, this is a this is a big time issue, yeah. and I think that. But it can be fixed if they want to fix it. It can be fixed. Yeah. So we'll keep an eye on the situation. As it Are there any unfolded. any other? I mean, we only hear this stuff with uh, the big names. Are there any other names out there that are being thrown around saying, oh, better look into them? Um, or we're going to wait for basketball when the floodgates probably open? Probably we're going to wait for basketball <laughs> until when the floodgates open. Um, but I know but I know a couple teams have been mostly well-known for it. One is Southfield a and obviously. A lot um, of transfers, yeah. They get a lot of transfers in there, um, particularly two of them. But I'm not. But we've already. But we don't. Robert but we don't Army. know what the process is where the they're at. Yeah. yeah, and one was already cleared. Yeah, correct? one was already cleared. There. So, but that's my thoughts into yeah. that. Um, I'm gonna <laughs> I, leave it at. I'm gonna leave it at that. I, I say we'll probably touch on this. Hopefully, way down the line, we'll yeah. say what happens to basketball season because you know, Sam, something's gonna pop up. Oh, I know. <laughs> I'm obvious. Something's gonna pop up. Um, let's go from. What's 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 end that transfer debate. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's go to a little bit more interesting when that's week six of the high school football season. Another we had a triple overtime game. Yes. A we regular overtime. A regular overtime game. And surprising losses. And some head scratching losses. Yes. Um that really has me going like what in the world happened? Yeah. Um Well the the, the year of the Twilight Zone OAA continues. Yes. <laughs> um when I look at the losses that we got two teams in the playoffs right now. I've already qualified. Both Farmington schools, North Farmington and Farmington, Ooh, both six and zero. I, I can't wait for you to tell me what the score of that game was. That uh, was the big one we're watching. Farmington won over Avondale fifty-one twenty-four. Ooh, and, Ro- and North Farmington beat Royal Oak forty-two to eight. Ooh. So when I look at, I thought the Avondale score. Would be when I look at, I thought the Avondale score would be a little bit closer. I yeah. mean, like now Avondale sits at three and three. Still got a very tough schedule. They got to play. Um. They still got to play. Um, they got Ferndale this week. It's a huge game for them. Then they got yeah. Berkeley, and then they close out the year with um, Seaholm. So two of those games, Avondale might need to win two or three just to pop, win yeah. out. To, they got to win out basically out to, get win, in. to get in, basically. So when I look at Avondale's road, it just got a lot harder. You yeah. know, and that loss to um, and that loss to Detroit Renaissance really has not helped things for them. Now, Detroit Renaissance, speaking of them, upset Detroit Cast Tech over the weekend. Ooh. 25 20. Now, Detroit Cast Tech sits at 2 and 4. 2 and 4 for they Cast Tech. They might have to set, they might have to, they might have to play Detroit Luther King in the Detroit Public School League semifinals. Yeah. But they're also going to have to win out, it looks like. I don't see you them, don't getting, them in getting in the playoffs. No. Yeah. Wow, that's a surprise. I don't see them getting in the playoffs. Um, when I look at, other teams that were head scratchers to me, um, Clark. I mean, like you know, Clarkson's <laughs> win against A and T was one. I think pure luck was had to be involved in that game because that was at Clarkston. That was at Clarkston. Yeah, I'm gonna have to see if I can get the game from those guys yep. over there. It was 22-21 in favor of Clarkston over A and T. Crazy score. Um, we mentioned about their freshman Ethan Clark. Yes. Um, he had a. He had another big game for Clarkston against a and um, Clark, of course, scored the tying score, um, made it 21-20 in overtime, and then a and commits a 15-yard penalty. Um, I guess it was an unsportsmanlike penalty. Oh, wow. And the moved, ball moved the half-yard line on the kick. So, when I, so, so they go for, Kurt Rich decides go to go two? for two, and then Clark just fights his way in. It kind of helps when you have a very shifty quarterback, a running back like Clark, um, and, and then to go along big, with two big, big defensive linemen. linemen like Spindler and Dillinger. So now Clark's insists at three and three, still alive, still, still alive. Got two very tough games looming, um, and you look at Clarkson; their pass doesn't get any easier. You know, no. you got Adams this week, and then you got Lake Orion next week. Yeah. So when you look at Clarkston. And that's it for them. And right? that's it for them. They don't have a nine game. They don't have game. a nine game. So when you look at Clarkston, and Kurt Richardson said this to the Detroit News, if they go four and four, they're not making the playoffs. Yeah. And what is your thoughts on Kurt Richardson's comments? True. It's true. He's right. He knows better than most, right? He's been mm-hmm. doing it a long time. But wouldn't you say, I mean, just let's, 
I know your allegiance is and our allegiance is here, but think about this. From where they were at the beginning of this season, imagine if they actually pull out a winning season and get in the playoffs and get five in three. <laughs> with what they've been going through. Wouldn't you call that one of the surprise you, you would say surprise, but maybe unexpected turnarounds. It of would be season. a surprise if Clarkson makes it in for a um, 17th straight year. It would be it would be a heck of a surprise. I mean, that would be crazy. But when you look at Clarkson's, you know, you look at what Clarkson's had to go through. Matt Miller's out for the year with an ACL MCL. Yes. You look at, of course, the um having to go to a sophomore quarterback and Mike DePillo. You got to look at, of course, the injury early season injury gear Dillinger. You know, sure. all the all the turmoil surrounding that. What have that. they done? Well, they what just, have they done? They, they won two they, straight. They've won two straight, you know what I mean? <laughs> By a combined six points, but... A W is a W. A w is a W. So when I look at Clarkston, you know, this is they're in must-win mode. They got a big one with Adams this week. We're going to talk Adams See, yeah, shortly. I'm, I, yes. We're going to talk Adams I shortly know. because they just got blown out. Because Clarkston Adams doesn't look like a for-sure Adams W now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, in, in Adams' playoff fate yes. doesn't look safe. You who know, would have thought of that? Who would have thought way, of that? Yeah. The way Adams... Two, two three weeks ago? Yeah, two, three no weeks way. ago. Who would have ever thought that? Now let's go to Adams. Um, yeah. Who, you're right. You look at Adams now. What, so what happened with Adams? They played West Bloomfield in the swap for West Memphis homecoming. They ended up getting blown out 30-6. A lot of that was thanks to Donovan Edwards, West Bloomfield's running back. Edwards had... Three touch, total touchdowns. Two, two rushing and one receiving. Wow. So, and then you get to hear Mike Stone's voice go, touchdown, <laughs> you, you, re- you really have a hard, hard time with that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway. Um, but when you're superstar, you have superstars for a reason, right? You look at West Blue. You lean you know, on them. You lean on them. Yeah, you lean on them. But look at Adams here. Adams has not been the same team since the Lake Orion loss. No. They have a lot, scored a total of 50 points. Total. total. Yeah. And this is a team that put 60 against Rochester the first week, and then they put 31 against both Oxford and Lake Orion, but they have not been the same team yeah. since. Yeah. And I think something's not right with Injuries, that. Injuries, maybe, man. What do we say? We were talking about it last week. We were talking week. about Mark Petrino. Yes. Anthony Petrino's injury. Yes, and he's been dinged up all yeah, all he's been season. Up. He's been beaten up all season. I just go back to the Lake Orion game, and he was down. They had to pull him out, and he came back in the next, you know, two plays later. Like, what are they doing with this kid? And he was making play after play after play. I mean, the kid's got a heart that I've I've not seen in a player in a long, long time. But geez, Louise! But they just leaned on that kid because he's he one of their stars. And he scored a touchdown in that game. He yes, scored he a touchdown did. against yeah. West Blue. He yeah. Oh, he did. I went with him. Yeah. Okay. So, um, but you know what I mean. I have a feeling that maybe some of the they're not as diverse on the offensive side. Well, as and that's we the thought. thing. You know, that's the thing. When you look at the Veer, you know what I mean. The Veer always it has to make you honest. You know what I mean. Yeah. It makes you honest. But we know on the other side, West Bloomfield is very good. Yes. But I thought the Veer would give West Bloomfield would... a lot of trouble. <laughs> Instead. Adams has been like a complete Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah. There's times that there's good Adams and then there's bad Adams. I mean, yeah. like what I thought was what I think what Spoonfield got was bad Adams. Yeah. You know, but and what Lake Orion got was good Adams. We got the back end of it, but we also Lake Orion hit them in the mouth. I mean, that was by far the hardest hitting game I've seen in years, Sam. I mean, you would agree. I mean, oh, yeah. the, the pops we heard, the hits on that, the Lake Orion defense on that Adams offense had to have taken a toll of some sort. I mean, we saw guys, I mean, I'm not going to say they're hurt and, you know, oh, that's why they've done what they've done, but maybe that has something to do with it. Yeah, but when you look at Adams, I mean, like, Adams can be a physical team themselves. They can, but if you, 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 this time of year, you know you, you cannot heal. I mean, no. It's just survive to the next game. Yeah. And right? now you look at Adams' road, Adams' schedule, it's difficult. Because now they got to play Clarkson this week. It's at home. Yeah. Um, then they got to go on the road to Southfield, A&T. And then they got to <laughs> close out the year at Stony Creek. Stony oh, wow. Creek has really improved. Hey, dude. 
would we we both said it. Stony Creek, the one to watch. Yes, Stony Creek's really improved. So we both thought two, three weeks ago, Adams was a playoff team. Absolutely. Now it might be not so sure yeah, when you look at Adams. Yeah, it's surprising. The offensive output is surprising. And that's a big concern, especially when you look at look at when they have if, if Ad, I don't know if Adams gets in if they get in five and four. I don't know if they get in. Because it's gonna be a very, very tough task for them to get in, even if they get in. If five they four. would have knocked off either Lake Orion or West Bloomfield, at least one of uh the 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 top top two, yeah. Top two. I think they would get in at five and four. But right, Adams but right, right now, now sits at three and three. They yeah. gotta win out. Oh yeah. no, they're four and two. My bad. Or they're four, four and two. two. Okay. They're four and two. They gotta win two of the th- two or three. So okay, if they gotta get by, but right now their team is struggling right now. Well, also you know with that the Adams loss right at West Bloomfield. Don't you think West Bloomfield said um, scoreboard against Lake Orion? We gotta do something. Yeah, I mean fifty some odd points. Right, I mean, they they gave that up. Was, that I, was against a good dragon defense. It is a good, I guess, a good dragon defense. But West Bloomfield has a decent defense as well. Very good defense. But they were just, it was haymakers in that game. Mm-hmm. You know, two heavyweights just swinging with their eyes closed, just and land and punch blow after blow, and it landed in uh, the Lakers' favor. Mm-hmm. But don't you think the next week would see? Hey, you better shore up that defense because we can't like, give up, especially to Adams if. Can't give up another thirty-five points no, or can't. forty. Not against them. You got it. You have to shore up that defense, and especially because now and they did. Yeah, and especially now, you know we're going to preview the week seven matchups, of course. Um, but West Bloomfield right now looking better on all cylinders. Yeah. Um, Lake they, they bounced got, back. Yeah. Lake Orient got a much needed win against Bloomfield Hills. Yeah. Um, Forty-two. Do you, do you call six. it the the bye week win? <laughs> no. Um, but another game we want to yeah. talk about. Is this was nuts? What Troy Athens in yeah. Rochester? Rochester's homecoming. Everybody's excited. It's Troy Athens. Rochester beat Troy Athens last year, twenty-seven twenty, um, game. in overtime. Thanks to a pick from Drake Reed. Now this game goes wild and crazy. Rochester fights back, ties the game up at twenty-four, forces overtime. Um, they force overtime, and of course. Troy, at, of course, Rochester. Um, now Troy Athens gets a block field, block the field goal attempt, which sets up the um, winning touchdown from Wayne Ashman. And Troy Athens beats Rochester 44 38 in triple overtime. Wow. Um, Another Wayne Ashman overtime. had Wayne Ashman had five touchdowns in that game. Wow. So you look at Troy Athens last season, this team was one and eight. Yeah. One and eight. This year, the three and three. They still got a tough schedule. They got to play Oak. They got to play, um, they got Seaholm this week. They got to play Oak be Park. It's going to be tough. And then they got to play Pontiac, Notre Dame Prep close the year. Notre Dame Prep's really improved. Yeah. So when I look at but Athens' road, big heck, improvement for Coach Billy Kinney. Yeah, just say a heck of a turnaround from a year ago. Right? Yeah. Nah. And battling. I mean, it's it's not, it's not like blowouts. I mean, they're still fighting for these W's. Yeah, they're still fighting. But uh, good for them, you know? Now, on the other side, you're Eric Vernon. <laughs> you're one in five. Yeah. Thought you had one at home. You thought you had one on your homecoming. And now you got to go to Lake Ori. Yeah. That's and, and not Lake, a good idea and Lake or- It's going to be a charged atmosphere, too. Why? Lake Ori's homecoming. It's going to be a tough atmosphere, I think, for Rochester. Packed I really house, do. And the buzz around Lake Orion for this Dragon Squad is high, high, high. Yes, it is. Um, other games that have me shocked, Allen Park at Fer- Allen Park yeah. at Ferndale. That was only 8 to nothing. Whoa. That was only 8 to nothing. And who won? Allen Park beat Ferndale. So now Ferndale sits at 2-4. and four. Likely going to need to win out. We thought that was a, that was an opportunity. We, or we thought that was a possibility. Yeah, we thought it was a possibility. Allen but Park now Ferndale... Zone. Ferndale now sits at two and four, likely gonna need to win out, especially because they gotta play Avondale and then Birmingham, Detroit Country Day to close out the year. Uh, I don't know about that, but it's gonna be a tough. Test. It is gonna be a tough road. So, was there any team this week that came off your mind and impressed you? Um, the way West Bloomfield bounced back, you know, after you 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 never know what's gonna happen. You know, a, a solid championship caliber team would do exactly what they would do. I don't know if it surprised me, but it was like, okay, 
there it is. It happened. It. I'm not. I. Th- I was more surprised at the offensive output of Adams. Yeah, that that Adams was the more. That I thought that would have been a tighter game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but and then um, to me the biggest surprise besides that game, Stony Creek. Yes, Stony Creek throw because Nick. Merlo has that team going in the right direction. And what's the record currently? Four and two. Yeah. They still got a tough schedule. They got to play. Um, They got Groves this week, then Rochester next week. That's Nick Merlo's return to Rochester. Yeah, that's their fifth win. And they then, should win that and then one. Adams at home. That They could go to they six. They could go to six. I'm serious. When if Adams at, doesn't get their act together. I'm When you look at Stony Creek, the th- difference in that game with Oxford, was their lines. Both their offensive and defensive lines were insane. And what was the score of that one? 27-14. I remember the touchdown Zach Denna, the running back, went from, I believe it was 85 yards. Wow. And a lot of that credit has to go to the to both their offensive and defensive line. They basically punched Oxford in the mouth on their homecoming. Yeah. They basically did. So now Stony Creek sits at four and two. If they can get the six wins, it'll be the first time that they have got the playoffs since 2013 mm. under then coach Brad Zuby. But if they beat Groves this week, yeah. Even if Stony Creek were to get in at five and four, I think they're in the playoffs. Yeah. But this is a game they need against a very good Groves team in Beverly Hills. Um Oxford, on the other hand. Yeah, what are they sitting at right now? They are right now one and five. Sup- are we surprised? I'm a little surprised. They're very young, but yeah. you know, but still, when you have a player like Drew Carpenter there, yeah. you know what I mean. When you have like, and I know you have a very young team there, but when you have players that have seen varsity experience, like Melvin Eccles, yeah, he did not play in that game. He was suspended after getting thrown out against Clarkson, um, oh. <laughs> and um. But when you look at Oxford, you know, yeah, yes, well, they're built for next year. They're built for the next two years. But but you go one and five. You go one and five. That's figure a be, bad year for Oxford to be five hundred. It's going to be you know? rough. It's going to be. I think it's going to be an interesting offseason for Coach Bud Riley and his team. It's going to be really interesting. Yeah, how that unfolds there. Um, and what's the remainder? Of what what's Oxford looking like? They got to. Pl- their schedule is brutal. They got to play Southfield this week. Tough. West Bloomfield next week. Oh boy. And then at Oak Park. Oh, man. Isn't that brutal? I mean, they could go. One and eight. Yeah, that's. I didn't see that coming. I didn't. Well, they played a vicious schedule. Yeah, it's. They well, played it. But we, we said all along, when you're in the OAA. Yeah, you got to play. They're all games. vicious. They're all vicious. <laughs> Even the games in the blue, they're vicious. Yeah. Um, so right now, when we look at the standings right now in the OAA. Yes. Um, Two playoff teams clinched already, Farmington and North Farmington. Yep. Three teams that should win this week should get in as well in West Bloomfield, Lake Orion, and Oak Park. Four and two teams that have some work to do. Adams. I mean, Adams. I mean, Gross is five and one, but I think that game with Stony Creek's a toss-up. Yeah, um, I, I agree. And um, teams that have work to do, Adams, Stony Creek, they're four and two. Um, okay right now. I can't afford to lose another one. Teams that really need to win out are um are um teams that are three and three right now, which is Southfield, um, Clarkston, um Southfield, Clarkston, Troy Athens, um, and then um the uh, and then and then the other team at, and then Avondale. Then the team that really needs to win out are Ferndale. They're two and four right now. Um that I think's got a shot at making the playoffs if they finish five and four. Um Let's look at the games for week seven. Yeah. Uh, hey, real quick. 500 for Southfield. Is that a surprise for you? They got a tough schedule. But do you think that's a 500? Would you expect them? Are you surprised? To make the playoffs at five and four? Yeah. The schedule that they have is the fact they beat, they split with Clarkston. Yeah. Um, They got to play River Rouge to close out the year. River Rouge right now is five and one. Um. I, if I if Southfield were to get in at five and four, um, I could see them getting in at five and four if if they um the schedule 
help other them out. Pe- other people have to other lose. People have to, yeah. Other people have to win to help or them. Or win, yeah. Other people have to win to help them. And when I look at a and them, just felt like they had some momentum coming into this season. They it, had it some momentum. It felt well, like it. You it know, felt and, like it, especially after winning two straight games. Yeah, and then, and you're like, okay. And then, and then the distraction came, and then, you know, and then they lose on a two-point conversion. Yeah. So, they got Oxford this week. So, let's look at the games this week um, around the league. North Farmington goes out of league this week. They take on Okemos. Okemos right now sits at 1-5. North really? Farmington right now is rolling people right now. Um, so, what is your thoughts heading into this game with North Farmington and Okemos? Okemos, um, you know, they play in the tough Capital Area Conference. They're playing against teams like DeWitt, Lansing Catholic. Yeah. Um, uh, Okemos is usually a really solid team. Mm-hmm. Uh, tough, tough, like you said, tough sledding up there. They were a playoff team last year. Yes. Um, I think North Farmington... Farmington should take care of them. I know they're tra- traveling up to Okemos, right? No, the, no Okemos, Okemos is, is coming down. North okay, Farmington. good, because that's a lousy drive. <laughs> Trust me, I made it a thousand times. But if you're North Farmington, yeah. you know, they Don't. have not been the same since that Waterford Kettering game. You know what I mean? They really haven't been tested since that Waterford Kettering game. Correct. And I don't know if Okemos is going to give them a test. Well, I do remember Grand Ledge, of course, another team in the Capital Area Conference, went into Davison and just got whooped by Davison. Yeah. Now Davison's going to get tested at Wayne State when they play um when they play Warren D. the South. So that would be, be a good really game. interesting game. I like game. that one. That would be That's a really a good, good game. Well, and I think, you know, Davison's got the best offense in the state of Michigan right now, the way that they're playing. Yeah. Um, that would be a very interesting game between Davison and Warren D. the South. Because Warren D. the South blew out Davison last year at Wayne and um, at Davison. Now it's at Wayne State, so Davison's got to do a lot of traveling. Yeah, no kidding. So, but back to uh, North Farmington. North Farmington, I think they handle Okemos. You think they handle? I think they do. Okay. And then let's go to a, another game that could be very, very interesting, and that is Royal Oak at Pontiac. You know, that uh, one's going to be very interesting. Um, the Pontiac played last weekend, right? They lost 48-6 to Berkeley. Royal Oak. Yeah. You don't think you I, think Earl Weaver's a difference in that game? Um, Pontiac is just having a hard time. I know that. Uh, uh, you know, just you get distractions, you got other things going on. It was their homecoming last week, and they got whooped. Yeah, they're having a hard time. Earl Weaver's going to be a difference maker in that game. I really think that Royal Oak's going to um do some business on Pontiac. Yeah. I really do. Um, next we got Farmington and Berkeley. You think Farmington's looking ahead? To North Farmington next week? Well, they could because it's the stars are aligning for an epic battle between those two. For the Farmington Cup? Yeah. But when you look at Berkeley coming off a 48-6 to win, that was their first one of the season. Um, and now you got to play Farmington. Yeah. Um, it's at Hurley Field. But if you're Berkeley, if you're Farmington, <sighs> I'm being very, very careful in this game. Well, would would you say that's a uh, what do you call it, a classic trap game? It's a classic trap game. So when I look at this game on paper, um, I I don't think Berkeley has the talent that Farmington has, but they could give them a game. Yeah, because Farmington might be looking ahead. Could yeah, but uh, it or it could be a total blowout. <laughs> um. I don't know. I feel Farmington's on a mission, man. I think they're tuned in. I think they're dialed in. I think they're ready to go. I, I well, think... even with their experience and their talent. Correct. I, I think they're going to uh, handle them pretty easy. Go handle Berkeley. Yeah. I got Berkeley as well. Oh, no, I got Farmington as well winning that game um, pretty convincingly. Avondale at Ferndale. The road teams won the last um, two meetings in mm, the series. Interesting. So... Well, I mean, Avondale's got to do something. They got to bounce They're back. They're three and three right now. They're in dangerous territory, but so is Ferndale. Ferndale's at two and four, and they sit in dangerous territory. You got two hungry teams that are uh, fighting for a playoff. Uh, their mm-hmm. lives right here. Um, when you look at Avondale, they've lost two straight games. Now both to the Farmington schools. Um, at, at both their schedules are very vicious after this game. Um. Avondale still has to play Berkeley, and then they still got to play Seaholm. Um, Ferndale, of course, they got to play them. Um, 
they got to play Detroit Country Day to close out the season. Um, that may be, a, and that's on the road. So when you look at this game here, <laughs> both teams need this game in the worst way possible. Yes, absolutely. Um, dog fight? You think it's going to be a dog fight? I think fight? it's going to be a dog fight. I think there's a lot of athletes on the field here. Um, but at the end of the day, I got to go with Avondale because when you look at the Yellow Jackets, um, they got a little bit more balance. Ferndale, of course, um, I'm a little, I got some questions with the receivers. Um, I'm curious how they are after what happened to them against Allen Park, um, losing eight nothing on their home field. Um, Hot score. And I think Avondale, and the difference in that Farnsey and Avondale game was that third quarter. I think Avondale is a little bit more better athletically than Ferndale is. So I got to give. You think they can close out the game? I think Avondale close out the game probably by a touchdown. You going to Avondale too? Um, well, I was picking Avondale the last couple of weeks. It hasn't worked out. Um, I would say yes. I think they're due, mm-hmm. but it's going to be close. Okay, now let's go to um a team that's really and just like the sinking ship of the Titanic, <laughs> and that has uh, been the Troy Colts. I'm starting you know, to. Uh, I'm starting to feel bad. Why? Because it was like, come on, yeah, you can get. I mean. You want to see people, you know, I hate seeing people just, you know, teams just, just struggling and struggling. It just drives me up the wall. And I can't do anything about it. And, I, you know, I want all of the teams in the OA to do well or at least, you know, improve and do things like that. And you're looking at me like I'm crazy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it's like, come on, you can at least get a field goal. You know why they, so they, they still have not scored. scored? They lost 49 not in the growth last week. Tough. And we, but we knew that was going to be a tough game. I mean, you know who they got this uh, week? Oak Park. This, you know, and it's at Oak Park. It's Oak Park's homecoming. Yeah, that's gonna, what a way to book your homecoming. It's it's going to be rough, and those you know, I get it. Winning's one thing, but you got to hand it to these kids on this Troy Colt team. Mm-hmm. They're still playing, trying. They're still working hard, going to practice, doing this stuff, and still playing for their school. And it just, it's not working out in their favor. But uh, my hat's off to them for at least, you're, I mean, you, what would we say? You learn life lessons through sport, correct? Yes, correct. And boy, are they learning a lot Yeah. this season. Especially when you look at the games that they could have been competitive, yeah. you know, especially it, early against Troy Athens and yeah. Rochester a couple weeks thought ago. Thought that was going to be a closer game. Um, it just it's just not happening. No, and then you look at their schedule the next two games after Oak Park. Yeah, it does ease up for them a little bit because they got to play um Bloomfield Hills next week, and then they play Berkeley to close out the season. Um, it, it, that it, those are games I could see Troy possibly scoring. Yes, because Bloomfield, man, they. They give up a truckload. They gave of points. up a truckload, and and quickly. Yes, they gave up a truckload of points. Yeah, and bloop and Berkeley. Yes, Berkeley's decent, but they still give up a ton of points. Yeah, and I mean we're not saying tr- the Colts are going to win. No, but they, we are going to celebrate a score. We want it. We want points for those kids. We want points on the board for those kids. Do they get them this week against Oak Park? No. I don't think so either. Um, I think Bloomfield is... Uh, Oak Hill, Park. Or, no, I, didn't you say Bloomfield Hills? Oak Park's playing Troy, yep. But you said the following week. Yeah, uh, following week, yeah. Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's... You think they're going to score against Booby Hills? I, I... <laughs> well, Booby Hills, thought... <laughs> Hills has to go to Troy, so... I thought they were going to score against Rochester, but... Yeah, Booby Hills, Booby Hills has to Booby Hills has to go to go um, has to go to Troy this year. Come on. I know, but come on. So... I mean, think about these the setup of these games. By the time the fourth quarter rolls around, yeah, you got to run and clock. The game is shorter. But you're playing – the starters are playing against third stringers. You'd figure that you'd just get something. Yeah. The, the game of football, the law of averages says there will be a fumble, and you will pick it up, and you will run it in. Yeah, but the law of average – It's just not – But the law of gravity states that – Um, <laughs> But the law of gravity also states that, you know, <laughs> there are those that are – there are those. If that you're are, an anchor, you stick to the ground. An anchor, you <laughs> stick to the ground. Yeah. 
Yeah, there is a oh, lot of that. Come on, Colts. We're root. I'm I'm pulling for you, man. Come on. Well, one other thing is Troy has a very high enrollment, and that's what I don't understand. Yeah, is you got a high enrollment, and I know it's tough, but still, come on. I mean, you don't have a record number of kids going out for cross country. I know that. I mean, come on. What are they doing? Playing I don't video know. games, staying home. No. Soccer, mate. Soccer. Soccer's big. I mean, Soccer's they're a great. Huge Good year. program out down Soccer's there. Soccer's huge here. The band is there. It's huge here as yep. well. I mean, everybody quit football. Went play. Went, joined the marching band. No. They got Oak Park this week. We both think they're not scoring this week. No. No. That'd be um, awesome if they did. Yeah, it would be great. Wouldn't mind an Ole defense with like ten seconds to go just to kick a field, help them out. Um, next we got a big one though over at the other Troy School, Troy Athens. Yeah. We got Seaholm taking on Troy Athens. That should be an interesting. Seaholm sits four and two. Troy Athens at three and three. Um, this one's interesting Seaholm, because these two teams played last year, but Seaholm's lost two straight. Yeah, like Seaholm is hard to gauge. I don't know what's going on over there. Um, they played Adams last week, two weeks ago with that Veer, and then they played Oak Park last week, lost forty-one twenty-one. Um. They just don't have a lot of depth. Do they have an identity? They got yet? athletes. They have an identity. Yeah, they got an identity, but they got an identity, but it's just um, they're just they just they've been competitive. Yeah. But with Seaholm, they played two tough teams. They played two very tough teams. Uh, and now they get now they play Troy Athens. This is a game they need to win. You know what I mean? This is a game they need to win. But for Athens, this is a huge game for them. If they can get if they can get this one, considering get the schedule they got to play with Oak Park and uh, having to play Oak Park next week, and then Pontiac Notre Dame prep the following week, yikes! Yeah. So, I I don't know if I see Athens winning this game, but I think it's gonna be closer than people think. I think it's gonna be much closer than people think. So I like in this game. I I do like um see home in this game. To bounce back, um, considering that their next two games are against your arch rival Groves, who ha- you haven't beaten in six straight times. Yeah. Or and you have Avondale close out the year. That's gonna be a tough game. Mm-hmm. I mean, so I think for Seaholm winning this game is very huge for them, but also for Athens, same thing. Yeah. So I got to give the edge to the Maples here in this one. Are uh, you going I'll upset? Be, no. Well, I I have no track record of upset picking. Um. But I'd say Maples, they should take care of business. They should take care of business. That's the thing. They should. Yes, I know that's not a definitive answer, but I said they should. They should. <laughs> take care of business. They should take care of business. Probably the big one in the white is Groves and Stony Creek. Yeah. People have asked me about that, about this game, that this is going to be a double-figure game or something in favor of Groves. I'm not so sure because... Stony Creek's a team that really has improved, have gotten better. Yeah. Especially under the armor up culture under Nick Merlo. Um when I look at this game, I think this is a trap game for Groves. I really do. Yes, Groves has got a ton of athletes, but I'm telling you, if Groves is a hard hitting if Stony Creek's a hard hitting physical team, yeah. they're gonna give Oxford they're gonna give Groves problems because I'm not sure how Groves' mental toughness level is going to be, but I think Stony Creek's going to Stony Creek's going to be a very interesting game for um for Groves. You know? Yes, and as far as I'm concerned, Stony Creek is on the rise. That they are, and the, right, and they they've got confidence. Groves has not been tested since that game against Oak Park when they lost that game. So I think this is a very dangerous game for Brendan Flaherty's team. Get a hard hit in Stony Creek, but like you said, the the lines, the both line, the offense defensive line play, good. They got a running back in Zach Dana, who's good. very good. Ryan Eckhout at quarterback, good. he's been very good. Um, right. it's gonna come down to Groves. I know they got some playmakers. Kobe Taylor, you got Ralph Donaldson playing defense. You got a Marcus Alexander quarterback. This is gonna be a hell of a game. Do you think this it's going to come down to execution, like uh, mental mistakes or unforced errors? I think it's errors? going to. I really do. I think it's going to come down to mental ex, mental execution and mistakes. If if whoever plays a clean football game is going to win this game, yeah. Um, 
when I look at home field favors grows, but Stony Creek has proven they can win, they on, can the road. win on the road. And yeah. look at last week what they did at Oxford. I mean, like that's that's really impressive what Stony Creek did on the road against a hard hitting physical football team like Oxford. Yeah. They and, have one that's a ball control. Right. Well, Groves has got a little bit more athletes. You know what I mean? They got a little bit more athletes. Um, now, in Oak Park, you now in, in, in Stony Creek, had a lead on Oak Park. You know, Oak Park has twice the athletes that Groves has, you know, and Stony Creek was in it with them. I think Stony Creek's going to be in this game with Groves to the very end. I really do. If Stony Creek upsets Groves, mm-hmm. Then, no matter what, this will be a playoff team at five and four. Now, they have to get it. They have to get this game. Do I think they're going to get this game? Probably not. <laughs> but it's going to be really, really close. But I think Stony Creek. I think it. But if Stony Creek upsets Groves. I will wear a Stony Creek shirt on air next week. <laughs> I will seriously do it. We got to make sure we turn the cameras on. Yes. It's evidence. Yes. But I will wear a Stony Creek shirt next week if Stony Creek upsets Groves. Do you have a Stony Creek shirt? No. <laughs> but I know the good people over there at Stony Creek. I know the Nick. I know Nick Coach Nick Merlo. Good man, by the way. Great man, by the way. Um, but I think Stony Creek. I think they beat him. You think Stony Creek beats Groves? I, I'm. Uh, yeah. I, I have a feeling. Feeling. You have a feeling you're going to pull it off. Yeah. But it's it. It's going to be like a last second fail. It's going to be come. It's kick a winning field goal to beat him or a winning touchdown. Winning field goal, last second, something. <laughs> but it. Yeah. Why not? Wow. This is the first time Ian Locke <laughs> I went on the upset. I went out on a limb. Yeah. You go out on a limb. To I, the I always upset. pick the favorite. I always say until the favorite show it gives me reason not to uh, pick them. I, I can Why see not? that happening. I think Sony Creek could upset Gross. I really hey, do. I don't have there's there's nothing on the line. I'm not threatening to wear a t shirt or anything. No. <laughs> um, I'll keep my clothes on either way. <laughs> um you got Lake Orion and Rochester. Yeah. Uh yeah, we know where this is going. Yeah, it's um W for Lake Orion. Yep. We know where that's going. Not that much said about that. Yep. Not much said. Um Oxford and Southfield. Really interesting. Well, I'm going to hit reverse. Backing up. Backing up the bus. Beep, beep, beep. Backing up the bus. Okay. Lake Orion, Rochester. Who does Lake Orion have the following week? Clarkson. Trap game? Uh, No. (laughs) No. I had to ask. I know. We said that of everybody else. We said everybody else. Okay. As long as it's out there. Rochester's been struggling. Defense has been a liability. You know what I mean? Yeah, Yeah, and Lake Orion's. Yeah, we rolling. know that's one. Yeah, they're rolling. Okay. Um, just, Oxford okay. and Southfield. Back and drive. Back and drive. Oxford, Southfield. Southfield. Okay, we didn't talk much about <laughs> horse death and all that. Southfield's just a three and three. Oxford, two and yeah, one. One and five. Yeah, I... It's Southfield's homecoming this week. Um, yeah, I got Southfield. <laughs> I mean, like, it's just, it's going to be just slaughtered. It's going to be. Oh, you think it's going to be that bad? No, I take that back. It's going to be a little bit closer, but... I mean, it's tough to blow out Oxford. I mean... Yeah, it's tough to blow them out. Right? Especially with the ball control. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, I, I'd i say maybe a 10-point game? I'm saying 24. Okay. 24. Um, and then we got um West Bloomfield, Bloomfield Hills. Yeah. Line up the EMS trucks? Yep. Because it's going to be a It's going to be blood a bloodbath. Bath. <laughs> yeah. I don't want anybody back. to get hurt. No. Don't don't misconstrue what I said. But yeah, it's uh yeah. Yeah, we know where that's going. Um and then and then we got Clarkson Adams. Is this the week that's, Clarkson I, goes? I'm telling you, dude, this is the game I'm watching. That's besides Stony Creek and Groves. Groves. This is the because so many there you know, we just talk about whether the storylines. This is the storyline. This is the, the game for Clark to make Clarkson's season. And if they lose, they're done. Done. Right? Uh, Oxford, we could have picked, it, you know, or who did they beat last week? I didn't pick them to win A&T. Right. But it happened. So you're it going, happened. okay, maybe they turned a the corner. Who Adams knows? Adams has been struggling offensively. 
Who do you pick? I mean, I would have taken Adams all day, you know, two weeks ago. But I don't know. Do you go Clarkston? On the road. On the road, in a hostile environment, in front of the Gold Rush. Do you take Clarkston? Yeah, but how many points does a Gold Rush score a game? Not a lot. <laughs> I would say uh, Adams bounces back. You think Adams takes Clarkston out? Yeah. You always play up for Clarkston. Oh, yeah. You always play up with Clarkston. Yeah, I'm going to take Adams here in this one as well. Um, I really think that. The, I think it's going to be tighter. It'll be tight. It's, uh, Clarkson's desperate. Maybe seven points. And Adams has got a good defense. I mean, even though they gave 30 last week to West Bluefield, um, they got a stout defense. Yeah. Um, so we'll see what <laughs> happens there. Good games. Tune good, in. Yeah, some good games. Um, let's go to cross country. Yeah, real quick, um, I've got about eight minutes to uh, chat up cross country. No, the, the big county meet, always mm-hmm. a huge meet, uh, was last Saturday down at Kensington Metro Park over uh, Milford was running that one. Uh, a very, if you're not familiar, very tough course, hilly, challenging, mm-hmm. perfect condition. Fantastic temperature-wise. The course was great, fast course. No As, hills or hills? Well, <laughs> super hilly. Okay. I mean, like. The, the, pl- the runners are just like, Ugh, I can't stay in county because the hills are crazy. Yeah. That and Lake Orion's course. I mean, are yeah. the one and two of nasty hills. All right. So Clarkston men, what a show did they put on last Saturday? Uh, Clarkston men take the county crown uh, 64 total points, which is phenomenal at a county meet. There are 33 teams competing. Uh, they scored 64 points for the win. Stony Creek. 87 points. Not, not too bad. far behind. Uh, Detroit CC behind them, 151 for third. Milford was fourth at 153. Uh, Rochester Adams came in at seventh at 217. Lake Orion, ninth, uh, 261. Now, a ninth place finish for that young Lake Orion squad. It helps having Andrew Nolan for Lake Orion. The, yeah, the, it the, helps. The senior phenom who was second behind Clarkson's Brendan Fafaza which I have to comment on Favaza. Senior, uh, distance runner. We've I've been watching this kid for... Where's this kid going? I, I, haven't, I was asking around, and people weren't sure uh, where he signed. But the way he closed out the track season at the regional meet was yeah. unbelievable. We're like, there's no way... I mean, blew away the field in the 3,200 meter. Phenomenal. And what did he do? Boom, comes the counties. We haven't seen him at the OA Jamborees because they're kind of saving him. Mm-hmm. That's a, kind of a trend now. That maybe we could talk about that. It, I, I don't like yeah. this keeping people out of the, the Jamborees and holding them for just the important meets, quote unquote. Yeah. But Favaza was out there and he destroyed the field. He was, uh, Andrew Nolan for Lake Orion was second, 20 seconds behind Favaza. And those two have been battling for the last two years for, uh, you know, just for the, the number one My spot goodness. in distance. It was phenomenal. And then we have uh, Clarkson. Let's talk about the Clarkson men. They had five of their top seven in the top 30. That's where you get 64 points, Sam. Man. Yeah, so that means that five of their top seven were all county runners. Goodness gracious. Which is absurd. I mean, that's, that's absurd. just absurd. So way to go. Congratulations, huge county credit for Coach. Um, huge credit for Clarkson. Oh, absolutely. And not only that, but we've seen whoever comes out of the Oakland County Championships, if you dominate, you have a real good shot at state. And they do. They do. The hard part is they've been moved out of the Region 9. I think they've been bumped to yeah, Region bumped 7. Yeah, Region 7, yep. A lot of competition in Region 7. That's really going to push them. So it's not like an automatic qualifier for no. these guys. They're going to have to battle for it. Right. Which with Favaza running away and they got three, you know, they're going to they're going to get in. They're going to the states. They what have about, I think they have a chance to they do. go top 5 a as shot. a team if not take it all. What about the girls, of course? Aubrey D- Delamio or see home with Delamio, again. she again another one of those racers that we didn't see at some of the jamborees or holding mm-hmm. her out for the big races. She came out and blew away the field as expected by roughly 20, actually 34 seconds. But Troy, but Troy's back. Troy is back, but I, it might be a, you know, a haze in the air there. So Troy took, yeah, congratulations to the Colts, the Troy Colts uh, for, on the women's side for taking the uh, county championship, 108 points. 
Clarkson was second, 158. Milford was third with 175. Seaholm was fourth at 210. Royal Oak fifth, good for them, at 242. Adams sixth at 255. Rochester was seventh at uh, 264. Uh, Oxford was 10th, tied with Lake Orion, but due to the tiebreaker with the 6th and 7th runners, Oxford gets the 10th slot. Lake Orion slides to 11th. Now, the winner, yes, Didamio, uh, Seaholm, she's on a mission. Yep. To run 1808 at that course is ridiculous. Um, she'll be going below 18 here at the regionals, if not by 15, 20 seconds. And, and their she, regional, I believe, is down in, I believe, in growth point, either there or that Bloomfield. I region believe they're seven. region seven. Yeah, the region so, seven. Yeah, right, yeah right. so Clarkston, you know, they're going to go up against Clarkston again. Clark, like and I said, Bloomfield Hills. Yes. So uh, let's see who else we have. Um, I'm looking Clarkston, Mia Patria, the senior. Love Mia. Known her for a long time. Uh, she's friends with my daughter. Great runner. Good senior campaign. Sixth for Clarkston as a senior. Sophie Novak, a surprising eight. But um, you know they scored the points. They did what they did. It's uh, it was an interesting um, uh, matchup for the uh, for the girls' side. Now the number one. Uh, we will go back to Troy. As t- uh, you know, got a couple minutes left. Troy women, their top runner, Paige Anderson, who's been their top leader all season, was 10th as a junior, going 1939 for Troy. Now, that was their highest finisher in the race, but they come in in bunches, right? So right. back in the 20s and the low when 30s, they, all come, they come in and going to come in and help. Them. Yes. Now, when Troy took the state title, they were in bunches higher in the top 20 top 15s, right? Um, and they're scoring in this uh, double digits as opposed to triple digits. It's going to be interesting to see. I don't see Troy winning a regional. They may, no. they may win it uh, because they do come in in, uh, in clumps. But as far as state title, I just don't see we gotta that. We got to see coming. where Troy's at for the region. Um, Correct. I just don't see that. Yeah. But Clarkston men, watch Clarkson's out. Clarkston's got a shot. Watch out. Okay. Uh, other than that, uh, what's coming up? They have. Uh, there's uh, the OAA, the final OAA Red Jamboree, and the White others are. White Jamboree and the yep, Blues are this They week. are the following week, not yep. this week. And then regionals the week after. Soccer districts start next week as well for, bo- for boys soccer. Um, congratulations to the league champions. Um, for the Red Division, it's Troy Athens. Of course, they're going to be one of the top players in the state this year to win that. Yeah, um, good team. The really White, got to congratulate Seaholm. Of course, Seaholm won the White title. And the blue title, of course. Um, I gotta see who won the blue title. Yeah, I didn't see that posted. So I gotta take a look at that. But yeah, it, it's all kind of coming. Falls winding down, dude. Oh yeah. Um, and uh, volleyball is uh, kind of wrapping still up. Still going wrapping up right now. I mean, the big games looming this week. Of course, Clarkson's win against Stony Creek was huge. Huge. If they knock off Lake Orion, then basically the red is basically over. Um. And that's and this Thursday. That's this Thursday at yeah. Lake Orion. Um, We're trying to get cameras there. It's going to be tough with Powder Puff and the homecoming And then you got and the Whites, basically. The Whites, basically, Seaholm losing the Booby Hills. It's Booby Hills' title. And then the Blue right now. Royal Oak looking very, very good right now. Yeah. So, lo- wide open. Wide open. So we'll <laughs> see what happens. See you to me. I'm going to sign off here. You take care, buddy. See you all next week, everybody. And take care, y'all. All right. See you, Sam. Oh, and now is produced by Sammy Terramina, and the views on this show are his and his alone. Give Owen TV a call at 248-393-1060 if you'd like to make your own podcast. Just $25 for a two-night course. Now enrolling. That's all for this edition of OA Now. We'll see you next week. See ya.